Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all having a very lovely week so far. Um, today I'm going to be discussing something that's really personal to me, uh, very close to my heart. I'm going to be sharing, you know, my journey, um, you know, being gay in football, the experience that I've had, the impact it that football v homophobia has had, um, a bit about my campaign work. Um, as everybody may know, obviously, um, February is um, LGBTQ plus History Month and uh, Football v Homophobia is Month of Action. So I think obviously as we end, as we end February, I thought this was a perfect time to um, put this video out there and in the hope that it will help somebody out there be able to be their true authentic selves um, and I want people to be able to take inspiration from from my journey and 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 and, and what's happened and yeah I just want people to be able to take away something from this video um, and if it helps one person then that means so much to me and um, so even if it just helps one so yeah we're going to get into it then so I'm going to take you right back to obviously um, a bit of background about me obviously don't really speak much about myself like I say in terms of my journey and, and my own personal experiences so I think it's nice to do this kind of video for my subscribers my viewers to get to know me a bit you know and get to know a bit about me um, and, and things like that so yeah so anybody that doesn't know obviously I obviously grew up being a big football fan you know football was a massive part of the family so I was kind of brought into football that way and then it kind of just grew and grew on me and, and yeah I've just followed football since I was small you know I love it and you know I just love I love the game um, to be honest with you and, and, and yeah it's just kind of materialized from there and I literally I live breathe sleep football you know now so yeah so that's kind of my football kind of um, journey in terms of how long I've been following football, yeah, pretty much all my life. Um, so yeah, always loved it and always, um, everything always revolves around football. But um, getting to the more serious parts of this now, obviously, um, obviously growing up, obviously I always knew I was different and I couldn't quite, um, kind of I didn't really know what it was about me that was different and obviously as you get older you start to kind of realize things and yeah obviously it came to my kind of I, I just realized uh, that yeah I, I am actually gay and you know and yeah so I, I knew from a very early age really for me um, I think and you know but like I say I always knew I was different uh, I never really fitted in in school, um, got really badly bullied at school, you know, mentally that really took its toll on me and, and things and, you know, I left school very, very low and, you know, it was, it was such a difficult moment because if I look back now on from, from, from where I was then to where I am now, I kind of get all emotional inside because I never ever thought I would achieve what I have so you know since that moment um, because I was so low I was rock bottom I, I didn't know what what I didn't I, I just I just felt I didn't have any hunger or desire to to you know go out there and achieve things really and and, and, you, and you, you know because I was so depressed at that moment and you know so yeah, it fills me with a lot of pride then I look back at that moment and and I see what I've done along the way so far. Um, it does, it, it does make me feel happy, but um, obviously bullying in school was very difficult and I kind of, kind of felt like I had to completely start again, if you could say so, in terms of confidence cause, um, and, and things like that. And, and mental, like I say, I've kind of struck... I still struggle mentally today with things and you know it so it still has a big impact on me now but I still 
feel like it's it's one of those where ultimately I've come out the other end and I've gone to achieve the things that I have and, and I may not be necessarily where I want to be in life right now but I still have achieved things that I never thought would be possible um, when I did leave school um, but anyway linking back to football um, so obviously kind of shared a bit about my uh, background and, and my school life um, but yeah as I said in, in them moments obviously I was still going to football I was I, you know, obviously was still going to watch others field play um, every week and yeah, obviously, like I said, I kind of came to the realization that I, I was gay. I realized it, and you know, and that's that. It just kind of clicked, you know. And, and I thought, yeah, that's why I feel different, you know. And, and and you know, going to football every week, I started to recognize things on the terraces that you know really made me feel uncomfortable. You know, the language that was used, you know, uh, the atmosphere, um, everything about it. It felt like. It was almost, when I went to football, I felt like I was going because I love football, but I didn't necessarily feel welcome there, you know, with, with the atmosphere and, and the language and and the things I was hearing. And it, it did start to get to me a lot. And then um, I kind of looked at it in a kind of a bigger picture, if you could say so. And I thought to myself, I want to, you know, do something about, I want to make a difference here, you know. And this is where my journey began with my campaign work. Um, like I say, on social media, obviously, um, you know, growing up, a lot of people on social media, so obviously I was kind of uh, scrolling, and obviously I saw um, other LGBTQ plus fan groups and um instantly from that moment I felt like yeah I want to bring a group to so just feel you know the team that I support all my life the team that is my hometown team and I wanted to do something about it you know because I didn't want to just sit back and allow it, it to escalate because I knew that if I felt like that on the terrace it's be, you know being being gay in football I felt like other members of the LGBTQ plus community that may go to town matches uh, would be experiencing the exactly the same thing or similar. You know, so I wanted to step out there and and and, and do something to to change, uh, to, to do my bit to change uh, football for the better. Um, so yeah, that I took a lot of inspiration from seeing that. So then that's when I started to get some ideas together and, you know, and start to, you know, piece together my own group, you know, getting my logo sort and things like that and, and just kind of and I just kind of put it out there on social media. Um and then the rest is history. It was an amazing amazing to and obviously it still exists today. Proud Terry is my group, but it is now a campaign more than a group. Um the group never really materialised as much as I'd like to, but I still felt very proud of what I did in that time because I felt like even though it never really materialized into a proper group, which is what I was wanting, because other obviously groups up and down the country uh, was doing that. I still felt like I made a difference, you know, the conversations that I had with other people. Um people were really grateful and appreciative of what I was doing. So that was that was what meant a lot to me. You know, I was more of an individual campaign myself, obviously, keeping on pushing for change in football. But one particular organisation, um, really, I feel like are a part of my journey as well, you know, and Football v Homophobia, you know, is an organisation that had a big positive impact on my journey, you know, and I, I truly feel like, you know, by them being visible, uh, seeing the amazing work they were doing in football, you know, from grassroots uh, up to the professional game, it really inspired me also to start my campaigning work as well um, surrounding this. I just want to kind of briefly give you a bit of background about uh, football the homophobia, really, if anybody doesn't know. Um, like I say, it was an initiative that was set up, obviously, to challenge, you know, uh, discrimination based on sexual orientation, uh, gender identity and 
expression at all levels of football um, with that clear stand against homophobia and transphobia um, so that everyone can enjoy you know the, the beautiful game um, you know but there was a real personal story behind this how football feel homophobia um, began and it was because of Justin Fashionu who sadly took his own life um, in 1998 I believe it was I don't remember Justin because I was only a few years old at that point but I've read a lot about him I've read you know, obviously his, his story it's heartbreaking really obviously you know first openly you know gay footballer um, that was hounded by the press really bullied um, and you know his brother was obviously a lot against um, him being gay as well and that really it really did um, get to him from what I've kind of read um, and yeah he, he just couldn't take it anymore the abuse that he was getting you know in football on the terraces as well I believe was was horrific um, and yeah he, he obviously sadly that's what happened so they you know they wanted to create this initiative which was originally called the Justin Foundation you know and then they kind of rebranded it to the Football v Homophobia um, initiative so yeah it, it's in his memory ultimately as well and I think that it's really a personal story behind why Football v Homophobia was set up so yeah um, so that's kind of what, what you know kind of a bit about them but yeah I, I always feel really appreciative and obviously very grateful for what they do and they continue to do now and, and I think that's why I, I support them as much as I can really you know as well um, share their posts you know share everything that you know that they you know they put out there because like I said thank you would never be enough for that because I feel like they really did help me to come to terms with who I was as well you know because obviously I, not that I ever kind of felt like I didn't want to be gay. I, I never really had that feeling. I was, some people may, may have that and, and you know, but I, I was always comfortable with who I was, you know, when I started to realise who I was ultimately. Uh, but I just think that anybody that everybody that has come out or anybody that's in that, in that moment now will know how lonely and, 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 and kind of, yeah, I don't know, yeah, really lonely um, place to be, you know, in terms of, you know, yes, the support from the family has been amazing, really, in terms of coming out, no, no issue was there, but before that, I was still kind of coming to terms who I was, and I had to go through that on my own, and even when I did come out, I still felt like, ultimately, it is me, so I, I have to deal with it myself, and, um, you know, that's, but yeah, very, you feel almost alone, like I say, and I think that, that's why I think that visibility is really vitally important, you know, because I think nowadays as well, especially, you know, there's so many role models for, you know, our community. Um, and I think that that, ultimately is massive because it kind of helps youngsters that are maybe are coming to terms who they are that you know people uh, people in football or sport or in any walk of, walks, of, walks of life really whatever they do they're coming out and and, and sharing their journey yeah I think it'll you know it really will inspire others to to be able to feel like they can as well and I certainly feel like that was the case with me when I was kind of, you know, obviously there wasn't as many role models um, growing up as there is now. Uh, not that I'm that old, but, the, you know, there weren't as many. The, the, obviously, there were, the, the, there were a few, but, you know, there's a lot more now. But I know that people back then that I saw that was visible, that was out and, and was proud of who they were, really helped me. To, to come out as well 
So the power of visibility, never underestimate that. And I think that that's kind of something why I feel like I want to do, you know, I've, that's why I've kind of done this video because I feel like for me being open about who I am and sharing my experience and things, I, I, I kind of hope that it will help people out there to, to be able to, to find the courage, you know, the bravery to, to come out themselves when they're ready, of course, because I always feel like you shouldn't ever force coming out. You should come out when you're ready, ultimately. And I, 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 I've always believed that. So, but it kind of helps. I hope it helps people on the way to that moment. Um, if, if, you know, if they're in the kind of stages of thinking that they might be, you know, gay or trans or bisexual, um, it will help them, you know, in that, in that aspect. So, yeah. So yeah, like I say, a bit about my group. Obviously, I did touch upon my group. Initially, it was a group, but obviously, it's now a campaign. Obviously, Proud Terriers, yeah, I mean, I'm very proud of what I achieved with Proud Terriers, really, because, you know, it was ultimately just me setting up the group on my own. Um, and yeah, I, I, you know, I, I look back and I, and I have I have achieved a lot with, with the group, you know. You know, given the chance to speak on, on the radio, be, be in uh, magazines, you know, being in the match day program as well at town on various occasions and being able to meet the players, get some of the players support as well. It's just been an incredible journey and I feel like along the way I've really kind of helped people um, and I've really, ultimately I just feel like for myself personally, I feel like I've actually, you know what, I've actually stood up and actually done something about something I'm really passionate about and you know people going to football shouldn't ever feel unwelcome and you know I feel like there's a lot still a lot of you know it's still very much it's too much masculine masculine masculinity in football I, I think it's such it's so but it's not just masculine masculinity it's really toxic masculine masculine masculinity but I mean I can't I can't say it but um, yeah, I do. I do. I think it's if you don't fit that stereotypical football fan, which is still unbelievable, is still around in terms of people think that you should be this way, and then that's the only way you can you should be. And if you aren't, then you're technically not welcome. Or oh, that's how we're made to feel. Um, I think it's it's really, 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 really bad. Really, if I'm honest, it's just not good. It's not acceptable. You know, and it's it's. It shouldn't be that way, and I think that even though, as I said earlier, even 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 though I acknowledge that you know maybe you know ten twenty years even further back than that, it was so much more difficult you know to um, you know to be gay in football and and to you know and 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 to um, you know kind of even talk about this kind of thing, you know, it was, it was kind of a taboo as well, at one, you know, further back, obviously, um, before my time, but I think I acknowledge that we've come a long way and we have, but the reality is, is that we've still got a long, long way to go because I don't, I've always said I love football. But I hate the atmosphere that surrounds it. And what I will say, I would have to actually say, I hate, you know, I hate the atmosphere uh, in the men's game because I've been to women's games, and I, I'm, you know, the difference between the two is just unbelievable. You know, you go to a women's game, and the atmosphere is so much more positive, more friendly, and more accepting towards, you know, people like me, you know, in the LGBTQ plus community. And I think that. That's another thing that I realise. Like, yeah, there is a massive problem in the men's game with 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 with, with it, and um, I think other aspects of it as well is that you know we we see things every other week really about homophobic chanting, you know, homo homophobic stuff being said in the stands. It's 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 still there, you know, it's still there, and people still think it's acceptable. 
Or they don't think it's acceptable. They just do it because they just want to look good in front of their mates or whatever. I don't know why they do it, to be honest with you, because I don't really know what benefit you can have of of discriminating against anybody in that regard. So, for me, people can treat it as like, oh, it's just banter and all this. And that. But, you know, it's not banter. You know, it's not banter for people that... I mean, you don't know who you you are around in, in a football ground, right? You don't know if somebody's kind of struggling uh, with their sexuality. Hearing stuff that's homophobic is not is not going to help that per- that particular person. You know, you don't know what you don't know what your words or your actions can actually do to somebody. You know, and I think that there has to be there has to be perspective. You know, you have to think before you speak. So. I think that's another thing that I've recognised, and yeah, it, 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 I still get the same feeling going to football from what I did when I was a younger, you know, a bit younger. So there's there's no even though we've made progress on some fronts, we, we're still not you know the atmosphere and we're still not there in terms of me or, or um, anybody else in, in this community to be able to go to a game without fear of that discrimination, the abuse, what are you going to hear today, what's going to happen today, you know, that utmost fear about what is going to happen and, you know, ultimately we're all there to support our team, you know, and we shouldn't have to have the, 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 these, 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 these feelings and, and, you know, these negative feelings towards it because we're all football fans, you know, and, and we all deserve to be able to be there and we all deserve to feel like we should be welcome there as well. And, you know, that's something that, that's kind of something that I hope will change soon. Um, and that's kind of something that I keep dreaming one day that will be the case so yeah proud terry like i say i kind of set it up um actually i set it up in the promotion season that we actually got promoted to the premier league which was a coincidence of course but yeah i set it up um in 2016 in october um and yeah like i say being on a real journey you know you know kind of linking with you know, colleges and schools and things and, you know, kind of being involved in their LGBTQ plus, you know, history stuff. And um, it's been really, really an incredible journey, you know, and I just feel really grateful for what I've managed to achieve and what I've... And also the amazing people that I've met as well along the way. Like I said, I mentioned that the LGBTQ plus fan groups earlier, you know, I've met... A lot of friends that maybe I don't see regular, but I still class, you know, people that are ultimately fighting for the same thing that I am. I've, I've, I've ultimately come friends with people uh, through it, and I think that's just such a lovely thing. But I always feel inspired by people's journeys and what other work people do as well, um, because, um, you know. Ultimately, I just want to keep doing what I'm doing and, and, and you know, obviously um, learning from others and, 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 and kind of, yeah, just keep going what, what, what I believe, truly believe in. And that is that, you know, homophobia and, and it shouldn't exist. You know, it shouldn't be here. It, it, it shouldn't be, a, it, it, you know, and, and I'm going to kind of go into my experience as a gay fan. What I've actually, actually kind of experienced and, and kind of, few situations that I came up against and the challenges that I faced we've all obviously been gay in football as well so um, and I think the pure ing- ignorance to some people is that you don't need to bring your sexuality into football and, and, and all this I feel that's, that's really an un- uneducated viewpoint because ultimately if you're not actually you know either gay you know bi or trans or whatever you know ultimately you don't know how it feels and ultimately, when we go to football, we feel discriminated against a lot of the time because of who we are. So it has everything to do with, um, it has everything to do with that. So when people say don't bring your sexuality, I think that's just really a poor 
uneducated um, kind of comment, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, like I say, my group just kept growing and growing and I and I felt like, even though I wasn't, I, mean, I got a lot of support from people and, you know, have my own flag as well, I'm proud to tell you it's flag, which was amazing. Um, like I say, going home and away to games, um, kind of got some great pictures along the way too, with, with different memories that we had. And yeah, I feel like all that kind of added, uh, you know, opportunities like going on the radio, like being in magazines, like being in the program, you know, that was a bonus. That but obviously I was given a platform to be able to showcase what I am passionate about and I feel like that's the most important thing uh, about it so so yeah it's been going obviously now it's kind of evolving to a more of an individual campaign so kind of looking to really launch it again really I'm not I've done bits I like to share different LGBT plus stuff you know obviously stories um, articles that are relevant but yeah I've said looking to kind of really up that work um in 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 the next um in the future really so yeah um but yeah obviously i'm selective on my socials and yeah i'm trying to keep you know raising awareness and, and showing that visibility um because ultimately on social media you never know really who will see the, these posts and i think that it can help people to 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 to, to be able to whether that is to come out or whether that just means that they feel like they're not as alone as maybe they would have been if they hadn't have seen, you know, really positive, inspiring stories from, from our community, really. So, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of how I, how, how my group and then my campaign is now kind of developed. So, yeah, watch this space with Proud Terriers and, and, and yeah, um, really excited to keep going with that and I'll always keep doing my bit to to um, challenge this in football because like I say it's something that's close to my heart it's something I experience every game every week that I go to and well not every but every most weeks I experience the negative stuff maybe at times and um, I, I know that others do as well so I just want to keep pushing for, for you know doing my bit um, and hopefully, you know, the football authorities start to do a bit more as well because they just don't do nowhere near enough, in my opinion. But yeah, we can only do our bit from the fan fans' perspective, and then the, the you know you just hope that people higher up will start to see um, what we kind of have, you know, start to see that they need to up their game really. Um, and yeah so I kind of like I said I do want to kind of mention some of my experiences um, being gay like I said I, I think that I, I have to start with the probably the most uncomfortable I've ever felt at a football match and that was uh, quite a number of years back now actually and obviously it was surprisingly it was actually coincidentally it was actually the Rainbow Laces fixture that's had this this particular incident happened um, against Brighton um, and yeah they, they actually uh, was actually homophobic chanting um, not in my part of the ground but it was at the opposite end and I think this is that was the most uncomfortable I ever felt at a football game ever before um, and I was very very close leaving it and I think I'm, 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 I'm adamant to this day that had it, had it have been um, sung around me, um, I would definitely have left um, because um, yeah, it was just it just really really did get to me and upset me a lot really, uh, made me quite angry and, and things and even 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 after the game, I felt I almost felt like the result was irrelevant, you know. Because no matter if we'd have won a lot or lost, I think we lost anyway. But I think if we'd have won or lost, it would have still feel, felt the same feeling because I still came away from that game um, feeling really, really 
upset and things about it and you know that obviously I was kind of had to do some media stuff for that as well obviously on local newspaper obviously they knew I was about um obviously Proud Terriers was existing so kind of came to me and actually asked me to speak um, I think one of the news outs as well came to me as well so yeah um yeah it was difficult it was difficult and unfortunately like I say that still happens today not I've never actually experienced anything, anything like that at Huddersfield since that point. But I just mean, if you look at up and down the country, it, st- it still happens, you know, especially when teams uh, in the Premier League, you know, when teams are up against Brighton, which as people may or may, may not be aware, that it is the gay capital of England. Uh, so Brighton fan, you know, Brighton always, it always seems to happen in Brighton games and it's always targeted to probably towards Brighton fans um, and then also Chelsea uh, is another team that is targeted for that horrible chant as well that, that, that they, they sing you know um, at the Chelsea supporters and um, so yeah it's just not acceptable and like I said that was one of the most comfortable moments I've had in, in football for sure I think um, another instance is again it was actually a wave fixture at Brighton um, where obviously I was on the coach obviously we, we arrived we were just arrived into Brighton and then these young, young lads at the back was being very homophobic and and things you know because obviously like I said that tag around Brighton being the gay capital it's, it's an easy target ultimately you know it's an easy target and it happens quite a lot um, so yeah, I kind of felt really uncomfortable in that situation when things were said behind me uh, about you know about things and, and 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 you know about you know really homophobic horrible stuff that I'm not going to mention on here. But um, I think you get the the the, the um, I think you can kind of get the impression of what I'm going with here and what I'm kind of on about in terms of the slurs that we hear and um, the things that are tagged towards. Um, LGBTQ plus people, so yeah, it, it, it's I, I've had challenges along the way. Like I said, I hear stuff on the terraces that I don't particularly like to hear at times, and that's quite regular. Um, and I do deem it quite homophobic at times as well. So look, we have to, as gay, bi, trans, who whatever you identify as, as part of this community, we face challenges going to football, and that's the reality. Um, and we shouldn't have to. We shouldn't have to do that. And you know, like I said earlier, we are entitled to be there as much as any other supporter. We love football just as much as anybody else, you know. And that's that's the bottom line. And the fact that we sat here, you know, in this in this day and age, you know. <clears throat> 2024 and we sat here and we're still talking about this kind of thing like I said these we you know we still have inc- incidents of homophobia in you know in, in the game um, and I, I think it's a mass it, well I don't think it is a massive problem and if you go out there and look at news stories about it you will realize that it is a massive problem and you know and if you would you know if you are game football you know obviously you are part of this community you do realise that, you know, it is a massive problem because I know what I experience, I know what I feel on a, on a weekly basis going to football matches and, and things and what, what I hear, you know, the atmosphere, thing I, I know, you know, so ultimately until there's a massive change in that kind of fan environment, I think will continue to have the same issues time and time again and also um, it will also stop sadly it will also stop um, people players in the game um, that might be gay and you know no doubt you know if you look at the top level in the Premier League there's bound to be there's bound to be somebody in the top flight that is gay but they, they ultimately they feel too scared afraid to come out and I just find that so sad and upsetting and, you know, like I said, it, it, 
hopefully one day we can actually be at a point where footballers, you know, can feel like they can come out because ultimately these footballers are having to live a lie because because it, because of how you know how homophobic you know the environment in football can be and for me that is just totally unacceptable nobody should have to to hide who they are because you know you, you shouldn't you know you shouldn't have to do that and it's just completely wrong um so it's sad sad and you know we've 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 kind of seen players come out after they've retired. Most notably, one of the um, highest, well, one of the highest profile footballers that come out after they retired was Thomas Hitzelsberger, who's the former Aston Villa player. Um, yeah, he, he obviously came out after he'd retired, but he ultimately said he didn't feel like he could come out at the time, so he had to live a life uh, up until the point he retired. So ultimately, he was pretending to be somebody else for a big part of his life. And I, and I think that's just, you know, it, it just get you know, it really does upset me. And, and I just feel like, but I can see why, and we're still at this stage today, I can see why, why footballers won't come out because the environment is not there for them to do so, you know, and, the more people speak out about the more footballers come out and and, 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 and kind of and say meaningful stuff, um then the, the the more what I mean by meaningful, sorry, I mean that people that actually come out and actually a true ally, not come out and, and boost their own profile and then turn their back turn their backs on us like a certain somebody did, um Jordan Henderson. And um, when he decided to come out, um, not co- you know, become an ally, you know, obviously speak out uh, in support of the LGBTQ plus community. But as soon as uh, money um, is involved, then he, sh- he showed his true colours when he decided to move to the Saudi League, where we all know there's a lot of um, controversy um, and a lot of um, laws over there. Um, that obviously are against um, homosexuality and um, the way people that are treating that in 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 in, in Saudi Arabia, um, yeah, obviously not just Saudi Arabia. To be fair, let's be honest. Obviously, this, you look around the world, and you know, obviously, you, you read stuff and you hear stuff about things that happen around the world, and you just think to yourself, "Wow, we're still at this stage. We're still at this stage where." countries are allowed to impose these laws that don't allow people to be who they are and if they do find out who they are then they're ultimately punished for being themselves it also it breaks my heart honestly it does and i know i talk about a lot in this country about equal rights we're still not equal in this country but i think perspective is put onto that when you look at countries around the world where ultimately you, you you simply can't be you can't be out you know you can't be out and you, you can't be seen to be out and you, and you know you have to pretend to be somebody else so there is perspective but also I can only really comment on how my life and how my experience in football has kind of you know kind of happened really but I have huge amount of um, I don't know what the word is I feel so sorry ultimately for people that um, are in countries that impose these horrible laws against us. Um, and again, when I see that there is obviously, you know, kind of campaigners, you know, that are trying to activists that are trying to push for change in those countries, that makes me feel a lot better about the situation. But ultimately, the situation. It's still the same, and um, I mean, it's good that people are trying to change these things. And um, you know, we have seen progress in some countries with LGBTQ plus rights as well. So that's really happy. That's really pleasing for me, and really pleasing for everybody else. And uh, 
and and yeah, we you know we are moving in the right direction, but um, yeah, <laughs> kind of gone off on one there really, haven't I? But obviously, it is very relevant, and um, yeah, so ultimately, we need allies in the game, more allies in the game, people to speak out about this. Obviously, everybody that does campaign work, activists, you know, being a true activist in this country, um, as well. We, we, are, we can all make a positive difference. And even if you don't really do campaign around this topic, you st everybody still has an opportunity to stand up for what's right, really. And, you know, we all have a responsibility to, to help change uh, things for the better, um, I think. And, you know... And, uh, and that's it, really. So, yeah, that's just a few instances, like I say, about my experiences. And the challenges, ultimately, that I faced... Um, after coming out and uh, you know kind of really recognising things that just made me feel uncomfortable really and having to go through things as well that ultimately you shouldn't have to do and, and I'm all too aware of that because I've got many LGT you know Q plus friends um, in football and um, yeah I, I you know, obviously we speak with one another and yeah, I hear you know, plenty of things um, about what experiences they have and um, what have, you know, kind of things that they've had to come up against, the barriers. Um, I mean, it kind of links to the player me in terms of the football player me because like I say, I've played football pretty much not all my life because I had a big break when I was kind of um, coming to terms with who I was and, and things and I kind of felt almost like excluded from that so I, I took a number of years out really uh, before I discovered the GFSN League uh, which is the Gay Football Supporters Network which is obviously a league uh, which allows um, well it just these football clubs around the UK not many so still people are still excluded from it but uh, I'm lucky that I've got a few local ones near me uh, but it just provides that safe space, inclusive you know, nature to be able to go and play football ultimately without, you know, kind of fear of discrimination, abuse or the language that may be used in um, just any grassroots football team, really. Um, so, yeah, but the fact is, as like I said, I had to kind of, we still have to segregate ourselves from society ultimately, don't we? Because, and again, it's completely wrong. You know, I shouldn't have to, we shouldn't have to segregate ourselves from sites to be able to play football ultimately. And it's just sad that that's the case still. Um, but, you know, that's where we're at. Ultimately, that's where we're at unfortunately and I think as much as I kind of obviously I played football when I was younger I took a big break after, after I kind of came out um, I didn't necessarily feel like there was a space for me obviously then I just got the GFSM league I joined um, Yorkshire Terriers which is based over in Leeds uh, and now I'm at Village Manchester um, which obviously is another not too far away from me as well so um yeah it's um it is sad but like i said the, the fact but that kind of highlights the issue we've got here because no matter whether you're a grassroots football team or you're a professional team that is exactly the reason why players in football whether you're low you know lower down in the leagues or if you're up at the top in the premier league um, in this country, that's why people, to, you know, players don't feel able to come out as well because they're not sure how they will be received. What kind of, um, and I'm sure that you know, I, I think that Real Ferdinand spoke about this in the past about the language that was used back then when he was playing, which obviously was quite a different era, of course, but wasn't so long ago uh, when he was playing. The language that was used. It just wasn't the environment to be able to come out. And I think there was a fantastic documentary about homophobia in football very recently. If you haven't seen it, um, it was on TNT Sports, available on Discovery Plus. Um, 
with Ryland Clark, um, and yeah, it was a really in interesting documentary. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my journey to where I am today. Like I said, I still openly, you know, openly go to games. I don't know why I said it openly. I still go to games and, um, you know, I still want to be that voice for people that may necessarily not feel able to, um, or not particularly in a, in, a, in a place in terms of the journey they're on that they feel like they're able to speak out. But I want to just keep kind of campaigning, keep pushing for change. Ultimately, I think the the kind of closing message that I have for anybody that has, has watched this, and I appreciate everybody that's watched it. I think ultimately I did this video because I don't want anybody to feel alone. Even though I, I'm all too aware that, you know, you know, when I came out, like I said earlier, when I came out, it, it's a very lonely place. And then the feelings that I got from going to football, you know, the unwelcoming nature, you know, the language, you know, the atmosphere and things like that. It's very much daunting, it's intimidating. That's what it is. And by anybody that comes across this, that it is maybe um, whatever part of the journey you're on um, with this, just know that you're not alone ultimately. I hope this really helped people and, you know, they've been able to listen to my story and relate, uh, which then doesn't make you feel as alone. Um, because look, you're made to feel like you're not welcome in football, you know, but ultimately just know that you are, you, you should be there and you should be allowed to go and you should, you know, shouldn't have to put up with what you, ha what we have to put up with. But if we all take responsibility and we all keep pushing for the same thing, you know, we can really improve the experiences for us all um, in this game that we love. And I kind of feel like, like I said earlier, I think it's important to come out when you're ready. Don't ever feel forced to come out when you're not ready, because I think that can be quite damaging really. You know, you don't want to be rushing to come out if you're not particularly ready, because it can have huge negative implications. Ultimately come out when you're ready to do so, but know that when you do come out, that there is that support network there you won't be alone. You, it will open up a new world, you know, for you. And ultimately, by being your true authentic self, you can inspire the next generation as well to be able to be themselves. And like I said, you know, it's really improving. So hopefully we don't have to keep inspiring people to be able to come out because it should be already you know, an environment and a space where we can all feel able to come out, but ultimately we're not there yet. So we have to speak as if it's not going to be um, in the next few years, for example. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it really. That's kind of it. Um, I hope it's kind of made sense the journey that I've been obviously with, with, with my overall story. And like I said, I hope people have taken something from this and really inspire them to be themselves and to know that if you, you know, if you do come out or whenever you come out, should I say, that there is that space for you, you know, there is that space for you and there is, there is, the, the, you know, it's all, it's not all doom and gloom, you know, like I said, I've had many positive experiences um, in terms of people obviously coming to me and, and speaking to me about obviously my journey I've been on proud terriers and you know how it's helped other people and I have genuinely had those conversations with people and you know um and people thanking me for what I do and things like that and, and things like just lovely comments and I've had lovely comments along the way uh, so I don't want to put every football fan football fan in the same box yeah but if we look at the overall bigger picture and the experience that we get going to matches we have to take, we, we, we don't, we acknowledge the positive parts, but 
ultimately the negative always overrides things um, and ultimately the, the atmosphere and the environment surrounding football in the men's game is still a problem it's still a problem you know and I know that people still don't feel able to go to games that's, that's, how, that's how bad it still is you know you know people don't feel able to go to games if they may be part of the LGBT plus community so again that's why should people stay away from a game that they love you know it's just not acceptable and not right and, and this is why I want to keep pushing for change because I want to get to a place where we can go to football, we can feel welcome in that environment, we can feel like we're not going to hear things that we're going to make us feel uncomfortable. You know, yeah, there's just no fear there because what you know, he's, you know, and we, you know, we can, yeah, just go and and just feel like we can be who we want to be, you know. And, and know that we don't have to fit into a stereotypical, whatever a stereotypical football fan should look like, you know, that's, we're not all the same. And I think that that's why times have to change. Football seems to be still stuck in the stone ages for me. It does, it, it, that's how it feels. Um, but yeah, I have been going for nearly an hour. So um, yeah, th that's, that's my journey. Um, from when I was a teenager to where I am now. Um, so I really do appreciate everybody that's watched this. I, I've, honestly, uh, like I said, I hope it helps somebody out there. Um, and I will stick to this promise that I will always keep pushing a change in football with my campaign work, you know, sharing stuff on social media, the big thing. I always make sure I share a lot of LGBT stuff on social media because it's so positive to to see things that are really uplifting to me and I, what I take inspiration from still to this day you know I still read stuff today and I think wow what an insp you know it really gives me a lot of inspiration to hear other people's journeys and other people other, other people's things that they've done positively to to make a change so yeah I'll keep doing that that's a promise from me uh, but ultimately we will get there. We've just got to keep going. And um, we'll look back in 10 years time and we'll hopefully see a big amount of progress that has been made um, and an overall better experience for us and for, you know, you know, to be able to enjoy the game that we love. Um, and yeah, that's it really. So yeah, Please do make sure you smash the like, subscribe if you are new, and um, share the video around. Obviously, uh, shares are much appreciated, especially with this kind of topic as well, because obviously I know that it is something that, you know, kind of, it's a topic that isn't discussed enough really, I think, you know, um, and, and I think that if we share it around a bit, then it will help. Um, it will it will reach out to to many people hopefully that will that will take something from this and really be inspired by what I've done what what I've done in the past with my campaigning and my journey that I've been on. But ultimately, I stand here as a proud, you know, gay man, and I I, I want to you know be visible, being a role model to others is what I've always you know trying to aspire myself to so yeah uh, that's it that, 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 that's that's the old, that's the bottom line of it so like I say thank you all for watching stay safe take care and I'll see you on Friday night for the match preview to our game this weekend but yeah take care everyone and I'll see you all very very soon